everybody. So this session about organizational change and implementation and best practices. Um, thanks a lot for choosing to share with me the next 25 minutes. I know there are a lot of very interesting sessions, so uh, thanks a million for your trust. Um, today I'm going to cover items like role hierarchy redesign, territory management cleanup, adding and deleting accounting members, items like sharing rules, public groups, folders, approval processes, and all the consequences of making all those changes into uh, the triggers, visual force, and integrations. And then I will share some little tips and tricks to make your life easier if you are planning a transformation. First of all, who I am? I am Laura Sartori, I'm currently Salesforce Business Analyst in the Hotel Beds Group, which is based in Palma, Mallorca. The six years before moving to Palma, I was in Dublin, where I was part of the uh, technical support team in Salesforce. Um, I was specialized in reporting and dashboards, and I really strongly believe on the power of a good, well done group report. <laughs> I earned five certifications and uh, I'm planning the next one. <laughs> so, uh, coming from so many years in support, um, when the business in Open Vance started to talk about changing everything, about on the role hierarchy, changing the sharing, team members, uh, moving all the portfolios, and they told me, okay, you have to do it in two hours. I started getting flashes. You know, when you're about to die, they say, um, <laughs> about all possible error messages, lockouts, gags, uh, issues that we could encounter. <laughs> and a sort of apocalypse started taking place in my head. So, um, after the initial uh, panic phase, uh, my colleague Jonathan and myself sat down and started um, you know, preparing all the action items that we needed to perform and calculating the best case scenario and the worst case scenario, making estimation on dependencies. And um, we asked the business to get uh, a week, at least, to, to manage all these changes. And they gave us three days. <laughs> so today, I'm going to talk about how the CRM team in Hotel Beds managed to perform a huge transformation in just three days. How we managed to pass from problems to a solution, and this solution that we actually decided to adopt. Um, sharing some deep, deep and tricks and the issues that we encountered and how we, we get over it. Because my core message for today is that if we did it in three days, you can do it as well. <laughs> um, I also think that the use case of hotel beds is a very successful one because despite of the huge effort and the very limited time, uh, we managed to reduce up to 22% the number of not used roles in the, in, the, in the organization. We managed to pass from 12 to 2 unassigned profiles, uh, delete all territories, uh, reduce the number of criteria-based uh, sharing rules, and remove the 40% of the public, public groups. Planning for us, oh yeah, with no downtime. <laughs> um, planning for us was the real key. So what we did uh, was to divide tasks by dependencies and what was visible and what it was invisible to the end users. So we started um, <coughs> getting the, the hierarchical um, uh, task items list and uh, we started to do things that we could start to do without impacting any users. So for example, I started uh, planning and uh, creating the new role hierarchy in parallel with the other one. Having the new hierarchy, we could also add the new role together with the old role in the public groups. So when we were moving the users into the new role, there was no issues. Um, the same thing with the folder sharing, so for reporting and dashboards. Also, we didn't have, um, we didn't have a full copy sandbox, so we actually wait uh, to, to refresh the sandbox once I was done with the raw hierarchy skeleton. 
so that D and D were the same, and we could prepare just one. <laughs> When it's a file that is actually a lifesaver when you are really a long time. Um, also, make sure you have a, uh, a checklist of all the items that you need to perform because when you have like such a limited time frame, you you tend to forget about things. It's normal, or you think that your colleague did something and and at the end it just get lost. So let's start with the role hierarchy. As I was saying, I created a structure, so the new skeleton of the hierarchy in advance. So I could prepare just one Excel file. Um, the end user will, will not notice at all. Um, but I was still very nervous about moving around 200 users in a very limited time. And I was asking you know, myself some philosophical questions starting from the top or from the bottom of the hierarchy to move the users to, you know, uh, affect less the, the ratio calculation and avoid lockouts and, and issue with it. Um, I was in this thinking and rethinking, I was finding pro and cons on both uh, approaches. Uh, then support mentioned that in some hidden documentation, you should start from the bottom but I didn't see it, so uh, we have to trust support in this. Um, but then everything changed because we were offered a feature that is called the fair sharing calculation, uh, which basically removed the, all these questions because what system admin can do is just um, uh, disable the sharing cal uh, public group calculation for a certain amount of time, so you can make all those changes and then recalculate everything on the, on the same time, which means that if you're moving one user to one row to the other, uh, you don't need to wait for this to happen and all the sharing to be calculated in the background before doing the next one. You do everything in, the, in one go and then we calculate everything. Um, this feature is very helpful because it gives you the full control of uh, the, the time of the recalculation. Um, in our experience, um, you, well, you have to test it in sandbox first, uh, be careful. In our experience, the recalculation of the sharing takes double the time in production respect to the sandbox. So if you are calculating the maintenance window, make sure that you calculate some extra time if you are uh, testing first in sandbox. Um, the first sharing calculation is very, very useful <coughs> if an organization is planning big changes that affect the uh, sharing recalculation or public group recalculation. Uh, make sure that when you're preparing your Excel file, you sort it by role ID, which means that the, the file will get up very faster. Um, territories. We have territories, um, territory man management has a legacy. Nobody had any idea of how it, it was set up or which visibility requirements it was meeting. So um, then studying a little bit the sharing, we, we discovered that we were sharing records far more than we were supposed to with, the, with our uh, sales manager. So we just decided to get rid of all of them. <laughs> um, so we started looking into documentation and we found some good tips, like when using bulk API, Use serial mode, it's just a flag on the data loader, uh, on the setting, setting settings, <laughs> and uh, with a low batch size. Um, also, you need to order territories from the bottom up, with the one without a parent territory that has to come first. Um, despite of using all the best practices, we even used a, uh, a batch size of one. Um, Deleting their territories manually was taken for everyone, like it had to be one by one. It was taken from five minutes to one hour to do that better, the next one. And also was causing some public uh, group membership lockouts. So, um, also when using the data loader, with, even though with serial mode and low batch size, we were running into a gag. And if 
what if you don't know what a gag is, is the type of error message that is say something like an unexpected error message occurred, uh, please contact support, error ID, a number of uh, numbers, a series of numbers, and then another series of numbers within parentheses. So as a personal note, as a support, as a support agent, uh, if you are creating a support case for the error message, make sure yet that you uh, add the numbers within parentheses when logging the case and uh, the steps to reproduce. So we were still uh, having a lot of issues and um, we, we were really slowed down by being unable to delete the territory. So uh, I remember about a feature that is called granular locking, uh, which is not really easy to get approved. Um, it this needs a case and needs approval um, from the third tier three level of support. Um, it is not easy to get, but not I, I, we got it not because I was asking for it to a friend, but uh, we actually proved that we were needing it. And because deleting territories is a very good use <coughs> case for this. What is granular locking? Um, basically, the system uh, applies some additional um, uh, logic to decide if one action needs uh, can be run in parallel to another. Um, so, for example, you don't have to wait for the deletion of the territory in order to do something on the public groups. They can be in parallel, while in, without it, you cannot. Still, uh, moving uh, users into roles has to be done on its own, and there's, there's no uh, excuse on this. I'm not fully sure that was the granular locking alone, but uh, my colleague Jonathan managed to delete in uh, one hour and a half with sharing recalculation <coughs> enabled, uh, the same amount of territories that it took me one day and a half in the weekend with sharing calculation disabled. So, off big time with the best uh, case scenario. Um, so, with all of these, we managed to move 200 users that day, change sharing rules, uh, add the public groups, change the public groups, and delete <coughs> all territories. Very productive day. Um, here I added for when the, the slides will be published some documentation about how to delete territories and also um, an example of query that could be of some inspiration uh, on how to get the territories um, ordered from the bottom up with the, without parents first, just in case you need it. So um, the business then was asking us to help a little bit with the handover. They were going to resign all the accounts, but they needed uh, the sales manager to be able to, um, to give some sort of handover, a warm handover to the, to the new owners. Um, so we decided to adopt the uh, accounting member features because it's an actual very powerful feature if you need to grant visibility um, of a temporary nature. What we did is we created an ad hoc uh, accounting role and we uh, assigned the old owner to all the accounts as a team member with this role. So when we will be done with the handover, we can simply delete all the accounting members with this specific role. Um, also, I added the, the piece of code that we used, uh, again as a reference, in case you want to take inspiration. Um, they will be published, so there's no need of studying writing it down. Um, other items. Um, the sharing rules need to be revised. They need to be understood, uh, looked into, updated, and uh, validated. So make sure that when you're touching sharing rules, you get a, uh, you get a backup. Uh, what I did uh, was to refresh my developer sandbox just before starting with these changes, so that I could always push back the chain set at any time. Um, what I did as well, uh, to get a big picture of what were the criteria uh, of the sharings in our organization since I was the new admin, 
um, was to copy the criteria and all the of the parent object and all the child affected by this sharing criteria um, in a word file. So I could get like a 360 view uh, of what were uh, the requirements. Also, um, public groups, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, as a trick we used, like, since you cannot push the group, uh, public group members, uh, the chain set is actually not supported. We decided to, um, to use the trick of having the new role already created, uh, added the new role together with the old role in the public groups. Um, this solved more or less 90% of also our issues uh, regarding uh, reporting dashboard folders and uh, list views visibilities. But we also had to check them as well. Um, make sure that you add it to your list if you're doing something like that because there is always uh, something that would be uh, forgotten. We completely forgot about approval processes. <laughs> so uh, learn from our mistakes and make sure that you review them uh, when, when you're doing uh, such big changes. So uh, we have one trigger in the account object that copy based on certain information that are on the parent uh, account, some uh, information on the child, um, including the ownership. So when we were moving the portfolios of the account, one change of, a, of account owner could be one, but could be also 100. So we had to be very careful on what we were, um, we were running. Um, also, we have an integration with a system that is called Atlas, uh, which sync every 10 minutes um, and also can handle only a certain amount of records per time. Otherwise, it locks the org. Yes, it happened, not this time, but previously. Um, so, we needed to be very careful on what we were sending to sync. And if one single account owner change was triggering 100, it could be potentially very dangerous. So we decided to completely stop the sync, we disabled it, and then we manually selected the batches to send for sync um, once we were done with all the portfolio assignments. Uh, also, we needed to assess what our visual force were showing uh, on rendering conditions uh, based on the role. We had actually one rendering condition that was, based, was basically hiding some buttons to the head of sales. wonder why. <laughs> uh, we decided to get rid of this, to take the risk, and, uh, but we had to make sure that we had the time to also deploy the classes and visual force pages on these three days. Other items, um, we took the, this choice. We created an inactive user role and we moved all the inactive users into this role. This has pros and cons. It's not uh, something that is good for everybody, so it's just a choice that we made, uh, was working for others. Um, we also created a trigger that was automatically putting the users into this inactive user role once it was made inactive. But this was also locking the public cloud membership for a while. Every time we were making an action, on a, um, making a user in inactive, so we decided to just disable it. Um, then, uh, yes, a good tip: when you are assigning the account ownership, make sure that you order by new uh, owner ID, as we, it will be faster. I'm talking about 20 minutes against two hours faster. So. It's, it's a big change. Um, yes, make sure that you test every change into the sandbox because when you're touching sharings, you can really do big damages. Um, also, if you are recal estimating the recalculation of the sharings when you are re enabling the sharing calculation, um, make sure that you double uh, by two the, the time. And, ah yes, and make sure that you also add some additional time to this because 
for a while we couldn't re-enable, we were blocked by the um, re-enable initial calculation due to the group membership error message. Also, make sure that you manage the communication to your end user very carefully. So make sure that you calculate the maintenance window. Make sure that you make a list of issues that your user can be having and make sure to provide them a process to contact you. Uh, we use a chatter group, a public facing chatter groups, where uh, the whole team, that all the team was monitoring and answering within minutes. Um, we decided to take like a couple of weeks as a settlement of uh, answer required. Uh, it went actually well, um, we got some good feedback from our users, so I, I will definitely recommend it. So, today, we talk about territory management, role hierarchy, public groups, uh, report dashboard folders, approval processes, um, accounting, sharing rules, triggers, workflows, and uh, visual force and FX. And uh, I really hope that you are just feeling a bit less scared of big changes and transformations. And I hope that you can go back to your offices and plan the next transformation uh, with a peaceful mindset. While the deferred sharing calculation is kind of easy to get, uh, you just need to explain a little bit uh, what you are doing and what you need control. Um, also, it's a very safe type of um, power because you can assign it via, like, it won't be uh, directly enabled in the profile of the system admin. You need to assign it. So, you can also, for example, uh, assign it via permission set and make a real, like, very controlled way you know, to, to give this power. Uh, the grammar locking needs a lot more of justification, so you need to uh, explain a bit better why you need it. Anybody else? 